Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders with another uh, release. This is the Autumn Rain Collection released on September 10th and it is so cozy autumn. This is the Autumn Rain Better Press plate and I'm going to use three of the Better Press inks in Taffy, Tuscan and Teal Topaz. It's all the teas apparently. That was not planned. <laughs> but these are three primary colors that will turn into a lovely rainbow. So we're going to do some rainbow better pressing. I just really thought that rain and umbrellas led to rainbows and I really wanted to play with that. So I will start out with the um, yellow of this trio and used my ink blending sponges to soften the edges. Ran that through my die cut machine and then we're going to come back with the taffy overlapping that with the yellow to help create a nice orange. I will come back with my ink blender and soften the edges there too because we don't want that to be a harsh line. I decided to uh, add a little more ink. I want that nice and bold and I'm always impressed with how well the ink transfers on the better press system and how quickly it dries. It's amazing. I don't even, it doesn't even matter what brand ink or whether it's pigment or dye ink it just it's like it's instantly absorbed and dried into the paper just uh, the better press is one of the best innovations that um, has come out in crafting in a long time it's really amazing right on par with the misty I know that's a pretty bold statement <laughs> or stamp positioning tools because there are lots of great ones out there Next, I'm going to die cut this out with uh, one of the 5x7 matting dies. This will end up being a little smaller, or no, I think, yeah, I think it's around 4 and 3 quarter by 6 and 3 quarters. And you can see that there's a gap on the bottom that uh, has nothing. Don't worry, we're going to take care of that. We're going to take that same die and die cut this a little shorter than the intended panel. And then we're going to use one of the sentiments from this colorful bold splatters. This is the better press of the month from August. I'm taking that sentiment and I'm going to um, glimmer hot foil it on a piece of hammer mill cardstock here. I'm using some polished brass foil. And I'll take the die that I die cut the other panel from and lay that on the cardstock for reference. So I know that I have this in a spot that I can die cut this panel later. And as you can see, this is a, a redo. Every piece of cardstock has two sides. <laughs> so we foil our sentiment. And it says, you color me happy, which is a perfect sentiment for this dice or for this card. I'll die cut that panel out and we're going to layer these two pieces together. And I'm checking placement because I want that sentiment to be completely visible and centered nicely in the space that'll be left. I'll tack that down with some best ever craft tape. Ran that through my die cut machine. Got to take my tape off. That uh, Best Ever Craft Tape, I use it a ton. You can see those pieces look very well used. I use them until they fall apart or don't have any tackiness left. Now that I have that placed correctly, uh, well, I didn't even show it. I do adhere those two pieces together with an extra piece of cardstock or some extra scraps between the rainbow and the white background. Next, I'm using some antique linen distress oxide and I'm using a blending brush to apply that ink. I just want, I don't want any harsh edges. I just want this to um, make an impression on our paper. And I'm going to use the same die that I used to cut the front panels to cut another panel. And we're gonna put this inside the card. This is kind of like when I stencil inside a card, it just brings that design from the front of the card to the inside. And then I'll just glue this panel to the uh, card base on the inside. I don't like to better press on the back, uh, on the actual card base because it can add a little bit of funny warping. Here we go. There's the extra cardstock on the back of the rainbow panel. 
and I will glue that directly to our white glimmer foiled sentiment panel. And then we're going to glue that to um, the front of the card. What have I got here? Oh, an additional. So this piece is cut with just a little bit larger die for um, a little matting behind our rainbow panel. And I adhered that with an extra piece of cardstock, scraps behind it, and um, then we'll just adhere this to the front of the card. Also centered nicely in that matted area. Sometimes just another little extra layer of white behind your main image panel can add just the right touch of detail to really make it stand out nicely. Next, we're going to move on to card number two. That was card number one. That was about as clean and simple as I get, to be honest. So we're going to use a couple of blues here. I've got uh, weathered wood, which my ink pad is loosely attached to the the base and is very inky and I brought an ink blending brush in hoping to smooth this out a little bit because there was a lot of ink on there and then I'm going to add some speckled egg distress oxide ink and I've just kind of added it all over and again going to blend it in with my ink blending brush I did not know if this was going to work so this is kind of a little experiment that you're on the road with me with and look at that, it turned out amazing. Oh, there are so many techniques that we have yet to discover with better breastplates because they are, again, one of the best newer innova innovations in the crafting industry. I just love them. There's so many things you can do with them. So I took a much lighter application of the uh, speckled egg and did the same thing I did for the first card, added a background that we're going to add to the inside of the card that I die cut and I'm now going to adhere that to the inside of the card base using those five by seven matting layers card uh, die sets those are amazing if you like to do five by seven cards you need a layering basic layer layering die set next we're going to use the layering stencils for autumn rain they have five stencils that coordinate with this better press plate. So you can color each of those individual elements on these plates. It's, uh, it's really quite clever actually. We're going to start with the leaves and I've got, uh, I think a crackling, crackling campfire. <laughs> and um, I think that's spiced marmalade or carved pumpkin. One of the two oranges that I really, or is that? wild honey that might be wild honey <clears throat> and i'm going to cut co not color i'm going to blend the leaves on this panel i thought that would be a nice autumnal color combination um, just going back and forth and getting a nice blend on these then we'll switch out to the next layer i just have my cardstock on my uh stamping sur or my surface here and that's gorgeous all by itself we can stop right there i'm going to add a little bit of the uh, spatter white from uh, spellbinders i'm thinning it out a little bit and spattering that over the cart front i could have left that a little thicker but you know what it still looks kind of fun and now we're going to use that for the card front for this card. We're going to use the same method and the same die. We'll die cut this out. Just using the best ever craft tape to tack that die in place. And then we're going to play with some uh, wax beads. We've got the must have autumn and the opal. And we've got the autumn rain um, wax seal. You know, my favorite method is to use um, contrasting ink color, or sorry, wax colors. And this is um, Stormy Sky, I think. And it's a new wax bead color. It's included in the autumn must have, the must have beads. No, I, what is it called? Must have something. Um, it's in this autumn mix and it's gorgeous. So I use that blue first. And as you can see, I'm using my heated up palette knife and scraping off. So I heat, I heat the seal 
when I'm heating the wax beads, I just set it on the uh, chimney, wax seal bead melting chimney. And then when everything's heated up, I put the first color on, scrape it off with the heated metal palette, put the leftover back in the, um, the spoon, and then let that cool for just a little bit, and then pour the next color onto my surface, and then set the wax seal right in it. Now here is another version. You can just use one color, and then use these um, deco color markers which are I think it's like an alcohol marker and you can do a metallic coloring here there's two different versions there and um, now I'm going to finish prepping the front of the card I have the speckled egg ink here the distress ink and I'm using my ink blending brush here to try to get that blended up onto the bottom of the card we're going to do a different um, uh, application or different technique on this one. I do have extra pieces of cardstock behind this one and we're not going to mat this with an additional white layer behind it. I'm going to let that get nice and adhered with my extra heavy weight on top. I took a piece of white cardstock and put it behind the opal wax seal because it's a bit translucent and in future I would do that a little differently there are solid white wax beads that are very opaque um, that would work better for that situation and if you want a little bit of that pearlescent you could just add one of the opal beads to the, the spoon and it adds the um, the shiny the opalescence we're also going to use this uh, autumn is this all the seasons autumn sayings? Um, I just want one of these and I have this ink blended scrap with uh, speckled egg on white cardstock and I'm going to tack down my piece of paper to the, the uh, hot foil plate. No, it's not a hot foil plate. It's a better press plate. And this one, oh, this is the summer one. It says make a splash, puddles, rain, splash why not I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut just that one sentiment I cut a couple extra layers of cardstock to place behind this to give it a little extra dimension and uh, strength and it makes it stand out a little better on this uh, card so I've got I think just two layers yeah two layers of extra cardstock that I'm going to add behind this and then we'll adhere it to the card front in that space below the uh, better pressed or right on that line. That's right. I put it right on the uh, division line there to make that blend just a little smoother. Look at make it look a little more intentional. And we'll put our seal right above the sentiment. I like how that um, just plays right into the whole design. How cute is that? Oh. There is our second completed card. There are four cards in this video. I could not stop. I could have made more. Um, speckled egg again is going to come into play. We're going to use an ink blending brush to apply this all over our uh, better press plate. And I have another, I think that's a watercolor piece of cardstock on the, uh, the plate there. Five by seven watercolor piece of cardstock. And we'll run that through our batter press or through the die cut machine. Of course, it does a stunning job. We're going to take the layered autumn rain stencil again. And we're going to start with uh, one of the with the um, handles for the umbrellas. I'm going to use this silver emb uh, not embossing, silver pigment ink and a sponge dauber. Now this sponge dauber, was used for something else previously. I didn't really realize that, and I'm having to work pretty hard. I just needed to switch my sponge dauber, um, the sponge on it, because it wasn't really picking up and delivering that very well. I do keep trying, and eventually I get it to go through those stencils. That is a user error, not a stencil error. I thought I would clean up the extra silver ink, and you're honestly not gonna see this much in the end card. Um, and a gray ink would have worked just as well. There you can see the shiny metallicness. If you're going for a metallic look, you can absolutely use a metallic pigment ink. Next, we're going to do the rest of the 
um, handle for the umbrellas. We're going to use the tea dye ink here with an ink blender. Uh, yeah, mini ink blending tool and just going to apply this. I personally prefer to use the sponges mini ink blending tools to do the distress oxide blending. It uh, just deliver delivers better for me. Um, and yeah, why fix it if it ain't broke? The uh, brushes, the mini ink blend or the ink blending brushes work well for dye inks for me, but these work the best. Next, we're going to use antique linen and old paper. These two colors are what we're going to use to do our sections of our umbrella. I'm starting with the antique linen. And you can see that there are two different stencils to do your uh, umbrella. You could make it all in one color, or you can add two different colors for a striped umbrella. I'm adding a little bit of the old paper um, to kind of blend the two colors. And I'm doing the tops of the umbrellas with the old paper. And um, I'll switch that up on the next stencil. I did go back with the antique linen and blend it with the uh, blend it with that to make those colors more seamless. These are really pretty easy to line up. And I'm using the uh, the masking of the leaves as uh, the initial way to get these lined up. It seems to make it the fastest. Here I've started with the old paper and I'm coming back with the antique linen and blending from the bottom up on those. And there we have our umbrellas. Whoops, I almost forgot to wipe it down a little bit. I'm trying to prevent <laughs> getting extra ink on places I don't want it. That was the whole point of wiping the um, surface down before I move to the next stencil and we're going to do the leaves last on this one we're going to use festive berries spiced marmalade and wild honey and i'm just going to um, do parts of the leaves and in, in the colors and some of them are not going to even have all three colors some are just going to have a couple of the colors and some are going to be mostly mainly one color just doing a really random inking here and I'll come back with the wild honey and try to blend all of this in a bit, make all of it a nice smooth blend. And my ink blending uh, sponge didn't even really get that contaminated. It's, it's all good. Then I'll wipe off all the extra ink. I love that my ink pads are nice and juicy right now. That is the best way to do your ink blending when your pads are nice and juicy. Now we're going to pull in the Vista View window. This is from the Tina Smith collection that came out, I think, in July. You know, the month where I had great intentions and things just fell apart. Well, I am using this uh, die, finally. It is such a fun die. We're going to make a little bit, I could have made this a shaker, but I just really wanted the shiny window reflection like you were looking outside. So I'm adding some clear... Uh, it's just stamp packaging or packaging that I, I'm not using. I have a stash of that for occasions just like this. I used the coordinating die. There were two pieces to this die. There's the drop-in insert that adds the panes and the embossed details. And then there's the solid shape die. And I used them in combination to create the white portion and just the shape die to create the acetate piece. Now I did have to put a piece of copy paper underneath the acetate when I ran it through my die cut machine to get the uh, die cut to work. Acetate can be a little challenging and that um, but that creates the size and shape I want it. I'm adding some uh, adhesive tape here. This is the double-sided tape um, that used to come in the kits. Oh, I think it still comes in the kits from Spellbinders. I have a lot of it in my stash. Um, and that's what I'm using to adhere the acetate. You, you could use liquid glue, but it takes longer to dry. And I thought I would just um, use what I had in my stash that was going to make things a little faster. Now I am sandwiching this acetate between the two white cardstock pieces. I cut both of those um, with the intention of making the sandwich. It does make things a little thicker, which is always nice also, but the 
uh, real point was to make this easy to adhere to our card. And we aren't going to have to use the tape on a roll, the adhesive roll, to get this to stick. And look at that. Isn't that cool? So we'll use that shape die again and die cut our beautiful little background. And then we're going to adhere those all together. And I'm trying to decide what uh, what I want to do with this. This was um, a piece of cardstock that I just did the stenciling on. I didn't do the better press. So you can use that stencil without the better press image too, um, which it's it's beautiful. Like I said, this collection is kind of a sleeper hit to me. It is gorgeous and it has lots of fun uses. I'm adding some liquid glue uh, behind that window and just making sure I don't have any of the glue on the acetate because that would make a funny mark on our uh, piece here. I let that dry nicely. We're going to take a piece of dark blue cardstock with the Autumn Chevron Embossing Folder of the Month from, that is from September. It's a really fun uh, embossing folder and it really reads neutral or masculine. This this would be an actually a good masculine card. We're going to take the speckled egg uh, ink and I've opened my card base up. This is the front of the card. This is what I was thinking um, and I'm ink blending around the edges because I want a little bit of a contrasting color behind the dark blue panel without uh, making this big jump between white and this uh, dark blue. Um, and it's okay. It looks okay. I'm going to take another piece of cardstock and I'm going to ink blend randomly with the first, with the same colors that I did the leaves with. I'm using the Wild Honey, Spiced Marmalade, and Festive Berries. I think that's what it was. Whatever it was that I said at the beginning. <laughs> and just making this swirl of ink blended color doesn't have to look pretty. We're going to die cut a bunch of leaves out of this. I swear that what took me the longest to create this card was finding a set of dies that are current, that are the right size. This is the Mulled Cider Distress um, Mica Spray Stain. It's um, a nice, uh, rich, orangey, red color, ready orange. And I spritz that over this ink blended panel. And I'm using the brand my brand new Magic Mat uh, from scrapbook.com on my Scout. They just came out with those. And here are the dyes that I searched for half an hour to find. Autumn leaves. The problem was there are lots of beautiful leaves, but not all of them are current. <laughs> So I was looking for something that I could point you in the direction of. I know a lot of people have lots of things in their stash, but if they see something that I'm creating with, they often get upset if they can't purchase it themselves. We also had the mini fall blooms. These are in the same collection as the autumn leaves, and they are smaller versions of these leaves. So we'll die cut both of those. And that magic mat is working pretty slick. I like that um, I don't have to go through so many acrylic plates with this. I decided to cut that ink blended speckled egg panel down a little bit with one of the uh, five by seven matting dies. And I am going to adhere. I adhered that to the card base with a little extra cardstock behind it. And same with the dark blue panel here. I could not tell you what color that is. It's from my stash. Um, I don't have it labeled. I am guessing it's a retired Stampin' Up! color, but I cannot tell you for sure. We're going to center that um, window element that we created on the cardstock just a little bit above the, uh, with a little more space on the bottom. Next, I'm going to add our leaves. I'm kind of creating a kitty corner uh, appeal here, I think. No, nope, just the left upper. I don't actually have this card in front of me. I apologize. So I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I did do the larger leaves um, in the kitty corners. So the upper left and the lower right. And I'm just placing those so they stay within the margins of the card. Now we're going to take our second wax seal that I created. This is the one that I colored the umbrella and the 
raindrops and we'll just nestle that in the lower right corner of the window. I'm using both the small and the large leaves to add a little extra life and fun to this. Still looking very masculine or neutral to me. And we'll take another of the All Seasons Autumn uh, Better Press Plates. This one has a bunch of autumn themed sentiments. The other one was the Summer, All Seasons Summer. Um, I'll take some, I think this is the satin metallics, it comes in a box of four rolls. This is the rose gold on some hammer mill white cardstock. Um, I guess I'm going to move on to the stenciling. I'm probably waiting for the uh, plate to heat up before I run it through the die cut machine. We're going to stencil the same leaves on the inside of the card. That's all we're going to do is do the leaves using the same colors. I don't even pull out the ink pads. I just use the ink that's on the ink blending brushes. Since I just used them, they're still pretty, um, they still have plenty of ink that I can use on them. Um, here we are pulling the uh, glimmer foiled sentiments out. You can better press these also, but I just like a little shimmer and shine. So I love the versatility that you can do both. You can do the better press or the glimmer foil with these plates. I love that these sentiments are all on one plate and the die is all on one plate. It makes it so easy to make a pile of sentiments. Even if you have to do, if you just want to do one, it's really easy to line it up behind whatever sentiment you want to do and run that through for both the die and the the spell the better press plate now that i've layered three layers together of that we're going to figure out how it fits best on the card i'll add a little liquid glue to the window pane frames and tack the sentiment right at the base of the panes tucked a little bit under one of the leaves and the seal so it just blends right in to the whole card. Next we're going to take a sentiment from the Sending Sunshine Sentiments, another uh, piece of that window collection from Tina Smith and I'm using some Versify and Claire Nocturne ink to add that sentiment to the inside of the card. And again, I don't have it in front of me. It's always a good day to have a good day, I think is what it says. <laughs> Something to that order. It's uh, a very, that card will work for just about any occasion. Next, we're going to do the uh, that background that I showed you a little earlier, very briefly. This is just the stenciling with no better pressing on a piece of white cardstock. I've taped it down to our, my surface. I'm using the different leaves, or sorry, the different ink colors for the leaves. Again, did not even have to re, um, did not even have to use my ink pads because they were nice and juicy yet. We'll take the umbrella. I was also trying to go for a slightly softer look, but uh, I think they were inky enough. I, it was full strength. Next, we're going to do the umbrellas, and we're using antique linen here. Just going to ink blend those in and switch out. You can see how quickly I can line these up. It's really fast. Um, I don't think it took me more than not even five minutes to do this panel. And then we'll use old paper on the second umbrella part. <clears throat> Next is the handles. Just trying to figure out which way to flip that. Sometimes I lay my stencils down the wrong direction. Just going to line those up, centering them under the umbrellas, and I'll tape that down. This was probably the hardest one for me to line up, apparently, because it's taken me forever. <laughs> and I didn't even tape it. I just grabbed the, um, I think it's probably gathered twigs that I'm using for the brown here. I think. No, that was probably tea dye. Maybe it was tea dye. Yeah. And then I'm going to use the speckled egg um, sponge dauber or ink, ink blending tool here to add the tips and the handles of the 
umbrellas. We're going to take the flickering candle distress mica stain and I'm just going to pull the whole uh, mechanism out and tap so I can get some spatters on this card base or this um, panel. I just wanted some gold spatters on there. That turned out beautiful. And we're going to take the postage edge rectangles to do some die cutting here. I'm going to uh, cut the um, inner detail. So this rectangle has like a stitching detail on the inside. And then I'm going to use this postage edge rectangle to die cut the matte layer for this. This is an A2 size card. I don't make this size very often, um, but this works perfect with the postage edge rectangles. I'm using, I had used the um, making sure that I'm putting this on the right way, make sure it's not upside down. And I kind of had that one umbrella centered on this uh, panel. I'm not going to do a whole lot more for this. We're using the All Seasons Autumn Better Press Plate again. These are those beautiful autumn sentiments. And this one is going to get layered with two or three uh, extra cardstocks here for the. Um, uh, extra dimension, sorry, distracted, trying to make my computer not make noises while I'm doing my voiceover. It's so annoying. <laughs> um, and then I'll adhere this down. Now I probably could have skipped the um, speckled egg uh, part of the stenciling completely because I don't know if it shows at all in the finished product. Oh wait, it will. We're cutting a piece of that scrap to go on the inside of the card. I'm just lining it up in my little mini guillotine from Spellbinders. This is amazing. This is the only one that I've seen that is six and a half inches wide on the base, which is very handy when you're making um, cards that it's a little more than, I think the other ones were around five inches wide. So this is this is really handy dandy. I keep this one right by my workspace and my larger guillotine is on the other side of the room next to my die cutting machine. Now that I've trimmed this down to a size that roughly fits inside the card, I'll glue that down and use a pair of scissors to trim off the excess. I just like to have that little extra peak inside the card and it's really handy to use something that you would have discarded that uh, coordinates with the front of the card. Those are the four cards I made for this uh, collection. I hope you enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed playing with these. I hope you think about uh, adding these to your collection. I haven't seen anything like this in other um, companies or other, uh, I don't have anything like this in my past collection. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. That would be awesome. Check that description box below for all of the products that I use today if you're interested in purchasing anything. And leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite part was or what you'd like to see me create in the future. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.